Hunt. That is a little gesture in support of Scott Giro for their former player who's having tough times back home in Australia. End of 2012 uh, pre-season, I was playing for the Catalans uh, in France. Um, had some headaches and, and trouble with some vision in, in pre-season. At the end of 2012, come home and uh, had a scan and, and they found a brain tumour. So January 2013, Professor Charlie Teo operated on me and, and took the tumour out and um, you know, he did an amazing job and, and thankfully I was lucky enough to go back and play for another two years and then um, retired, been involved in coaching and then uh, unfortunately in, in November uh, last year I had, had follow-up scans and uh, tumours had come back, um, had surgery again uh, to remove the brain tumours but unfortunately it spread to my liver. They're quite aggressive, fast growing so yeah the fact I had the scan in in February, and then yeah, ten months later, uh, or so nine months later, there was there was six tumours that had grown back in my brain um, from nothing to six in in a really short space of time. What what was the diagnosis at the time? Uh, so when at the time uh, we were, you know, obviously it was, you know, I remember Charlie saying that um, we got it all at the moment, but the chances are it's going to come back. So. Um, yeah, for then to have the clear brain and then for it to go to the liver, it just, I don't know, it just feels like you take one hit after another. And then, um, yeah, in January, I was, oh, December, sorry, just before Christmas, I was told that there's probably no cure and we won't be going to be able to stop it and that I'll potentially only have 18 months to two years to live. So um, to hear that was pretty confronting. Um, but I guess some part of me just never really believed that. I just always thought that, you know, we're going to find a way. Mullen left foot kick, it'll bounce okay. Will it? Scott Giro! Well, he's barely had a day off, um, barely. So he started chemo. To my knowledge, I reckon he's had, apart from going to see the specialist, I reckon since he's been crook, he's had one day when he wasn't in, and that's over a long period of time and a lot of treatment. Has it been a welcome distraction to have this place to come to and have their support around you? Absolutely, and now that I can't play anymore, physically can't do that, so to be able to coach and be involved with the clubs, um, you know, something I'm passionate about and, and, and my home club, Newcastle as well, so I'm um, very thankful that they've given me the opportunity to work for the club and um, it really is a great distraction. You ready? Up, 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 go. How much of a blessing is it to have these beautiful girls to come home to every day? It's amazing, it's, it's, it's what I live for. She thinks I'm all about footy, but <laughs> it's uh, footy comes second, family comes first. And you know, I love my job, but I love my family uh, even more. And, and being able to come home and have these girls, you know, crawl or run up to me when I when I walk in the back gate, and um, yeah, to just see them, you know, smiling or screaming or crying when I get home, it's going through the the motions. Yeah, that's just, a special moment. Just to see them growing <laughs> yeah. up. So you're a nurse by trade. Yeah. Has, has that helped? Has it made this process harder or easier? I feel like it's made it easier for me. Um, in saying that though, having kids has made it harder. So the initial time in 2013, you know, I, it took me a good two or three years to actually cry about that. After having kids, you sort of hate, like hate more emotional. You talk about the emotion after being a mother, and that, do you think that's because the thought of losing the girls losing their father is terrifying? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I think it, it was very hard on Imogen this second time around because she, although she doesn't know the full extent of it, she just knew that something wasn't right, and um, you know if he had to go to the doctors for scans or anything like that, like Imogen would just lose it. She was just, just scream and cry and just think that he was never coming back. But yeah, she likes to keep Daddy very close, um, including all night long. Well, she wants to be close, but I think she knows that her daddy's a fighter, like you seem to know. Where do you think yeah. Scott gets that from? I mean, I don't know. I guess footy is, you know, taught him a lot, you know. Um, even just in his playing career, you know, he had to fight for his positions and had to fight his way through and he never gave up. I mean, your fight's as strong as the people around you, so, you know, we're all sort of keeping each other together and that's what's getting us through. So, after getting your initial diagnosis of 18 months to two years to live, you went and saw your specialist this week and what was the news? 
Yeah, so we got some got some good news the other day. It looks like the treatment uh, that I've started two months ago is um, starting to work. It's changed the images and the scans that I've had. It's looking like some things are starting to change. Uh, to hear those words was, yeah, it was a really good relief. Can you can you share with us how Livy reacted to the news? <laughs> um, I, I guess at first we, Lib said. Um, yeah, I think she said, uh, I'm confused, is it, you know, is that the old scan, the new scan? She said, no, that's the new scan and it's looking really positive. It looks, looks like there's some really good changes, some changes in a, in a positive way. We were just so ecstatic because we've sort of learnt that your mind frame and your mindset is just everything in this game and with everything in life. And if you don't believe it and if you don't, you know, relish in every sort of positive moment, then... Yeah, you, you know, nothing good will come of it. Sometimes we take our health for granted, don't we? And Scotty's a good reminder every day of probably the most important things in life, your health and family first, and then we've got this game called Rugby League that sometimes we put above all of it. You've never heard him ever complain. He always comes in positive, so I'm sure there's days where he's not feeling great, but um, as a player, you sense that. You know, if he's not in a bad mood, well, what, what, you know, what reason is there for anyone else to complain? So, yeah, he's really inspiring. You know, if I'm inspiring them, that's great, and, um, but they're certainly inspiring me, so if I'm not here at the club, I'm at home with my family and my little girls, so, um, yeah, life's pretty good, I suppose.